Most people probably think of me as a sport climber and for competitions and the training that I do for the competitions. And in many ways they're right. For the last 15 years, I haven't had the time to spend even one summer in Norway. So this year I feel like it was about time to see and travel around my own country. Go with the flow a little bit and try some new styles of climbing. Our plan is to meet up with Alex Honnold in Stavanger for the main objective of this trip. We pick up Alex from the airport and we drive straight to Lusefjorden and Shalag, a 900 meter wall where there are still lines that haven't been free climbed. During Alex's stay, we see more or less constant rain and we hardly see the sun at all. But we use the brief moments of visibility to check if there's any chance for it to dry up. The rock is very wet here. You can see the large body of water down below and then many bodies of water feeding into it. I think this would take at least six weeks to dry. So uh, I came to Norway to climb this granite big wall with Magnus and uh, it's raining. With a boat we check the base of the wall and we hike to the top to check the upper pitches of our route. What we see leaves little room for hope and after a couple of days of cuddling up in little camping huts in rain, fog and thunder, we accept that it is what it is. And this little adventure will simply have to wait for another time. We're heading north to Lofoten, a chain of islands far north of the Arctic Circle, with walls racing straight out of the Atlantic Ocean. Up there I'll climb with my friend Martin, who will teach me about track climbing and big wall climbing. And together we'll climb walls much bigger than anything that I have ever climbed. Straight off the plane, Martin suggested that we try to speed climb Preston, which is a 400 meter granite bulk sticking straight out of the ocean. He suggested that we'd similar climb the route, running BLA, climbing with a certain slack between us. He would put in gear, I would put it out. And that's basically the fastest climbing you can do. We started climbing at 1 a.m. during the midnight sun and the coolest hours of the day. It was a great introduction to big wall track climbing, but tomorrow we have our eyes set on something even bigger, Stopilaven, which is the biggest wall on Lofoten. Once again, we start during the midnight sun, and the approach takes us about an hour. We try to leave as much gear and even water as possible, and start the 16 pitches without any water. The route is 800 meters long, and in retrospect, I think we've kind of underestimated the strength of the midnight sun. Because even halfway, we wish that we'd brought at least a little bit of water with us. The second half of the climb was pretty much torture without any water, but the climb was still great. Even the jamming and the cracks and all the stuff that I don't know how to do was still enjoyable and I felt pretty safe the whole way even with Martin as a partner who has the reputation of being kind of on the crazy side. We get to the top of Stupila at 5 a.m. in the morning, and we've successfully changed day and night. After a four-hour hike down to the car, we drive straight to breakfast and then to bed. And after only three hours of sleep, we drop Martin off at the airport. And that concludes our stay here in Lofoten. Now we're heading back down south. So to make the trip a lot more enjoyable, we board the Hurtigruten ship and take that down south. Hurtigruten has been operating for more than 100 years and is considered to be one of the backbones of Norwegian transportation. We have two days on this cruise to relax, recharge, eat good food and get ready for what's to come.
out on her. This cave means something special to me, and I think that's because I was one of the first people to bolt a line throughout the cave. In 2011, I went there with a bolting team, and our mission was to create some pretty futuristic lines throughout the cave. Back then, I bolted Thor's hammer, which I didn't have the time to actually do myself. So I gave it away to Adam, and uh, it immediately created a buzz. I got a lot of uh, emails and messages from people asking me about this cave that they'd seen photos of. And uh, I was feeling a little bit bad that I didn't have the time to climb much there myself. Which is why it's really nice to be back here now and having the time to try some of the routes that I put so much effort into bolting. Thor's hammer goes through the steepest part of the cave. The first 20 meters is the crux. And then it gets a little bit easier and there's a second crux. And the top half is relatively easy. Spending a summer in Norway was great. Not only the climbing, but also the places we saw and the people we met. Being introduced to bigger walls by such experienced climbers definitely made me excited for more. So that one day I might be able to not only call myself a sport climber.